In this tutorial, we will look at single-sided reconstruction. It's important to note that all analysis is done on tracks, and this involves both working with and analyzing target tracks, including grooming track data, grooming sensor data, generating tracks, and merging tracks. As such, you must know how to configure debrief and how to load your data. So before running through this tutorial, you should really have completed tutorial three, working with debrief. And if you haven't done this, please watch the videos before you carry on with this one. So now it's time to start building and grooming the target track. Now we're going to groom some dodgy track data. First, so we need to load and understand the data itself. So we no longer need boat1.rep, so I can close that. Don't save the changes. And then I can close the narrative viewer. I don't need that anymore. And then I open my navigator view and I go to my S2R folder. And there we have dodgytrack.rep. So double click on it and then it will load as a new debrief plot. And if you get the select track mode, select over the ground. As always, click on fit to window so we can see all the data that we're working with. So here we have our main track data. And as you can see from the outline view, you can see we have our track name is Frigga. You can just see the name at the top there, but it is partially hidden. So the blue own ship track is called Frigate, and the vessel is traveling from the north in a general southeasterly direction. You probably won't be able to see it on your screen, but there is a period of missing data on this track, as well as several jumps in the data itself. But this will become obvious shortly. Please note that jumps often occur when the inertial navigation system receives an external update, and we'll fix these first. But first of all, we need to make the track and the data easier to understand, so we'll do this by making the track data points visible. So we go down to the outline view, and we've got track frigate, and I'll just size of that then left click and then as you can see in the track we have 156 items this is all the data contained within the track I'm going to right click on track frigate and then go mouse over frigate then symbol frequency and then I'm going to select all and now we can see all the symbol frequency points there is one symbol at every data point and you can clearly see the missing data points now one near the top and one about two thirds of the way down. Now we're going to look at the label frequency just to give us a little bit more clarity. So frigate, label frequency, and label all. So now if I zoom in a little bit, I can see the time points for my frigate track. So as we can see here, there's a jump between 0143 and 0152. And if I pan, all the way down, I can see we've got three periods of missing data here. These missing data areas are called jumps. But in contrast to the, the previous gap where there was missing data, we can clearly see from the time label 0325, 0326, this is actually a jump in the data. And 0360, 0327 and 0336, 0337. So we'll fix these first. And we'll go to 0337, where the vehicle is traveling in a southeasterly direction. I right click on the data point, and then I select split track before 0337. And then look what happens. If you also look in the outline view, you'll see that track frigate now contains two track segments. And we now need to align the tracks. But first of all, we'll hide the data labels as they do clutter the display somewhat. I right click on the track, mouse over frigate, label frequency, and then select none. The labels are hidden. If I mouse over the data points, after a half a second or so, I get the tooltip which tells me 0336, and that one's 0327, I believe. There we go. So it's easy to see which ones we're going to be working with. Now to align the tracks, we need to drag one track segment to the other. So click on drag track segment, or you can press Alt 1 on your keyboard, and then the bearing residuals window will open. Now because I need to drag the entire track segment, I can't drag it using the shear mode. As you can see, the mouse cursor doesn't change to the green hand, which is what I need. So I need to select translate which translate the whole track, because remember we've got two track segments now. Now when I move my mouse cursor over the end, it changes to a green hand, 
and I can see where I need to drop it. I'm just going to move it away from there and then I'm going to zoom in. Alt 1 again. And now I can drag my track. And then I can use the pan to see exactly where it's going to go. And then you can see the dotted line and the circle showing me where the next data point is. And then I can drop that. And I'll zoom in as far as I can. And try and make that exact. There we go. I mean, that's pretty much all I'm going to get. So there we go. And now I can zoom out, fit to window, and then I can zoom back in on that section there. So now I've positioned my lower track segment. I want to merge the track segments in the outline view. So I right click on track segments, then I merge all track segments, and I'm back down to positions 156. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to move the time slider to 03, 0326. Go. And this is where the vessel is looking like it's just done a sharp turn to, to the northwest previously. And now it's going to do a sharp turn to the southeast. So I right click on the track data point And I select split track before 0327. And again the track will split in two. If you look at the outline view again we've now got two track segments. So again, click on drag track segment, and now I want to bring it down to this point. Again, zoom in as far as I can to get it as precise as possible, drag it over, then release the mouse. And zoom in again. You see how easy this is. And there we are. Fit to window. And then I can zoom in again. And as we did before, we now need to merge the track segments. So I right click, merge all track segments. And we're back down to one single position, 156 items. So I'll now do the same thing with the third jump. So I right click on the data point 0326 which is in here somewhere there we go split track before 0326 outline view showing two track segments as is the plot editor and again drag the lower of the two tracks towards the main track zoom in again And then zoom in as far as I can, just so I can fine tune the final positioning. Don't forget you can use the control Z, undo, redo. Just zoom out a little bit and then come back in again, just to make sure that it's okay. And there we go. And then over in the outline view, right click on track segment, merge all track segments. Then we click to fit to window and I'll close the bearing residuals view. And now we have this part of the track now, as we can see, straight line and all's good. But now we're going to zoom in on the first part where we have the missing data. And if you remember, there's about nine minutes of missing data. So if I mouse over 0143, and then mouse over the next one, 0152. So we have nine minutes of missing data here. But fortunately, we've been able to obtain data for this period from a slightly less accurate manually typed log. So we'll now use this external data to fill the remaining gap. I'm going to zoom out fit to window before I do this. Then I click on navigator and then I find third party track dot rep. Drag and drop the file in. 
And if you get the select track mode, please select OTG over the ground. Now, as you can see, it's put it right to the north here. So if I zoom out a little bit, you can see where our third party track is. Now, just going to zoom, zoom in a little bit. And now I need to position and merge the green track with the blue track. Now I want to drag whole feature here, so click on drag whole feature or press Alt 3 on the keyboard, move my mouse cursor over the third party track until it turns green and then I can drag it down just underneath the G in Frigate. Now if I click fit to window, I can then zoom in on the top part of the track. And what we're going to do now is we're going to split the track and join the top of the third party track to the 0143 and the bottom to 0152. So we zoom in on the blue track as we've done and then select split track after 0143. And there we go. Now I click on the drag hole feature and I go to my third party track and I do exactly as I've done before. Zoom in. Track hole feature. And then do the same again. And get it as precise as we can. And then one more time. Or I'll click on the wrong button. And there we go. That looks slightly off, but it might just be my eyes. That's pretty good. That's just the lettering of the, of the track. And now we need to join the track segments. If you look in the outline view, again, we've got two track segments, which are the blue segments, and we've got the TP track, which is consisting of eight items. So now we've positioned the green track again to the southern end of the brake. We now need to drag the remaining track segment to join the blue floating track to the bottom of the green track. Now I can't use drag hole component because that's what happens. So what I need to do is I need to switch to drag track segment. And then that just selects that single track. And again, I do the same. Position it as accurately as I can. There we go. I can zoom out fit to window and then I can zoom back in as before. And if I look in the outline view now, I can see we have track TP underscore track and then we have track frigate. All told, we have one track and then two track segments, but of course, we just want one single track. So I left click on track frigate, hold down the control key and left click on TP underscore track. Right click, then select group tracks into frigate. And now we have one single track. And now we have one track, but of course we still have three track segments. So right click on track segments and then select merge all track segments. And now you'll see just one track frigate and with 164 items in the positions. And our track is now complete. So in this stage of the tutorial, you fix some jumps in the own ship track and you filled in a period of missing data using external data. And we can close the current plot because we won't need it for the next stage and there's no need to save any changes. In the next video, we'll be looking at grooming sensor data.